Hi everybody, today we're going to look at the Cobra Drive HD Dual View Dash Cam. Dash Cam mount, got a little sticker mounting ball thingy, an HDMI cable. Did I open this the wrong way? Oh, I did open this the wrong way. USB cable, suction cup thingy, USB lighter plug cable that lets you make the back ca rear camera come to the front. It looks like a USB cable that goes to like a USB socket and something else. Another USB type A to micro. There are the instructions. I think I was supposed to see those first. And then we have a camera. This is probably the rear camera because it's got a little connector thing that would fit into that extension cord thing. And then here is the main unit. It's got a camera right there. Dashboard here. Need help? Wait! I got a little stoppy hand here. Need help? Wait! Okay, I see it. Please do not return this product to the store. <laughs> I'm not getting a good feeling here. No, I'm just teasing. Please contact Cobra directly for service and support by phone, blah, 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 blah. Because we want you to call us so we can convince you it's great even though you're having issues. No, I'm teasing. By the way, this is not a paid endorsement if you haven't figured that out. 30% off accessories, a micro USB hardware kit. Your vehicle hardware kit connects your dash cam directly to your fuse box, freeing your cigarette lighter adapter. To order, visit www. Okay, that's nice, I like that. Drive HD, congratulations on your purchase of the CCDC4488 bundle pack. The C CCDC4488 includes one CDR905 DVT dash cam and included accessories. I'm not kidding here. <laughs> Take a look. One CA mount 001 adhesive mount. Anything else? FCC regulatory information. This device complies with uh, part 15 of the FCC rules. Operation is subject to the following. Oh, this is the one I love. This is the one that says the device must accept interference. This device must accept any interference received, including interference that may cause undesired operation. I wonder if this device is for use in Cuba. Anyway. Moving on. Product registration. Register your uh, quick start guide. We're going to see how easy it is to set up this camera. I have the quick start guide. I have all the parts, the main unit, computer screen, and then the cameras in the front. This will mount in the front. It has a little Y connector hooked in and one side goes to the rear camera. The other side goes to the power. The suction cup here. Suction cup doohickey shipping plastic. You remove that with a quick release mount. This other piece here, sticky mount that would replace the suction cup mount if I want a more permanent. Here's the rear view camera. It's got a short little cable with a plug, it connects into this long cable, and they give you instructions on how to run it along the side. I'm actually not gonna run it in the paneling. I'm just gonna drape it along the side here to the front. There's a huge bee sitting right there. It's like a yellow jacket looking thing. And I think it smells food or something in the car. No! The rear view camera has a little sticky here. and. It actually has a little clicky adjust thing. So if I stick this on the windshield, likely I'm going to stick this facing towards the back. So this will stick on the windshield and this will face out the back. And the final thing we're going to be using today is this car auto lighter adapter that has a USB hookup on the other side. And it has this USB extension cable here that will go from the lighter hookup to the main computer unit. Do I want that kind of mounting? Because that's kind of obstructing stuff. Maybe I can put this up here in the corner. The cable comes out this way towards the windshield. This whole thing with the suction cup and the gears here and the little thing, this all takes up a lot of distance. See, I'd like to have this thing mounted way up here. Wouldn't be obstructing my view. Let me try to mount the suction cup as high as I can adjacent to the rear view mirror. It seems like it's a little bit obstructing, you know, the rear view mirror. Mirror, now I could bring this over further, but then I get Get into obstructing you know so i'm gonna go way up in the corner of the windshield that's better but again we have this cable and let's try that's no good half the camera is my windshield let me just try mounting this higher without the cable going in front of the rear view mirror uh, that's not so bad let me just try this mounting now i actually think that this happens to be maybe the best mounting so far that i've found the only thing i gotta say is this sticker is here there's a little toll sticker and when the camera is mounted right here 
that thing shows up in the, if I move this over, that is no longer in play. And that just hangs something down right in front of me here, which is okay. It's a little less, um, you know, it's like right there in the middle of everything, but that that's doable too. Here I am in the rear of the vehicle. There are defrosting lines here. And as you can see, those things actually show up very clearly. So I need to mount it not here, but here, like not here, not here. I also can't mount mine way up here at the top because it will be completely obstructed. So right now I'm in the center of the vehicle in the back, about a foot behind the vehicle. So now I am one step over from the center, uh, not quite to the left edge yet, and I'm one foot behind the vehicle. Now I'm at the left edge of the vehicle, about a foot behind the vehicle. Now I'm about two feet away from the vehicle, uh, from the left of the vehicle, and about a foot behind. And now I'm about four feet from the left of the vehicle, and about a foot behind. You can see it's recording by the two blinking red lights in the upper left corner. The two lights correspond to the front camera and the rear camera. So if I click on this button here, you'll see it goes to the rear camera. If I click again, it goes off. If I click again, it comes on with both cameras. And if I click again, it comes back around to the front camera. With this button, you can click it to toggle audio recording on or off. This button takes a snapshot. If I start the iCobra application up, the Bluetooth icon in the upper right corner will light up. When the dash cam is connected to my smartphone over Bluetooth, it will record the video files with GPS information. I can then use the video viewer available as a download from the Cobra website to view the video with the GPS information and mapping. If I want to stop recording, I press this little pause button. When recording is stopped, the menu options here at the bottom change. There's video settings, general settings, iRadar settings and language. In the video settings, I can set the Cam 1 resolution to 1080p 30fps, 720p 60fps, or 720p 30fps. Cam 2 resolution only has 720p 30fps. The next option is loop clip time. The loop clip time determines how long each video clip is that the dash cam will record before starting the next video clip. There's a setting called action cam mode. What that does is it allows continuous recording to a single video file for as long as it can. The next menu option is G sensor. G sensor lets me set the sensitivity of the G sensor capability in this dash cam, which is a capability that allows it to detect a collision or a jarring of the camera at which time it will begin emergency recording. I'll explain emergency recording in a second. Parking mode has three options, off, five minutes, and ten minutes. My understanding, I have not used this particular feature, but my understanding is it allows you to set this in parking mode when you turn off the car so that it will record video while you're away from the car if it detects motion or if the G sensor goes off. They recommend in the manual that if you're going to use this mode, you should be hooked up to an always on power supply. And in my car, I'm hooked into the lighter, which turns off when I turn off the vehicle. I don't really have a need for this parking mode and they have it off by default. So I'm assuming if somebody's interested in some kind of motion detection video recording with the dash cam, they might want to use this feature. I personally don't have a need for for it, so I'm gonna just leave this off and you can read more about it in their manual if you're interested in that. The next option here is whether you want the Cobra uh, watermark on the video that gets recorded. The date time stamp and whether you want that on or off. The date time stamp format. So the next two options are flip cam 2 and mirror cam 2. Flip cam allows you to flip the camera image 
vertically, meaning upside down or right side right. And you would use this option in case the camera in the back was upside down on the display. You would choose this, like check it or uncheck it, to flip the image in a way where it is the correct orientation. Mirror cam changes the horizontal orientation of the image. So it'll flip it horizontally. Um, so it'll look like your rear view mirror or not, depending on which setting you like. The next two features are lane departure and collision warning. Lane departure, if activated, will provide you an audible warning when you're exiting a lane to the left or to the right. The documentation makes it sound like the roads have to be fairly well defined and whatnot for this to work. They have it disabled by default, and I'm going to just leave it in their default setting. The other feature is collision warning, which requires you to have a compatible GPS connected to the dash cam because it will only be active when you're driving 35 miles an hour or faster as indicated by the GPS that you have connected. And if it detects you're fast approaching an obstacle, supposedly it will give you an alert. The first option is volume and lets you set the volume. The next one lets you set the date and time. The next one lets you set the screen saver. Then you can disable the beep sound or enable the beep sound. I just keep it in the default. You can format the SD card, restore the defaults, and you can also look at the firmware version. Coming back out, you see we have the iRadar settings. These are the default settings, and I just keep them all active. If you have iRadar enabled with Bluetooth and you have your smartphone on with the iRadar application connected, you can use the iRadar features. I have not really used the iRadar features much. However, if you do want GPS embedded in the video that you record with this dash cam, you do require a GPS. And for this particular model, the GPS comes from your smartphone when you run the iRadar app. So if I want GPS with this particular model, I have to connect it to my smartphone with a Bluetooth and have the iRadar app running on my phone and then the video will be recorded with GPS. When video is recorded with GPS, you can use uh, the Drive HD playback application that you can download from the Cobra website and that'll allow you to play back the video and look at the GPS and mapping along with the video. So if we exit back out to the main menu, we can go here and that's where you can set the language. Now I mentioned before emergency recording. Now there's two basic ways that emergency recording can begin. One way is for you to manually activate emergency recording by pressing the button located at the top of the unit right up here. So if I press this right now, emergency recording will begin. It can also start by the G sensor. So if the unit is jarred, emergency recording will begin unless you disable the G sensor capability. And you can see when I banged on it there that it began emergency recording on its own. Now when emergency recording begins, what that means is it will take the current video file that you're recording and it will lock it. One thing I've noticed with this is that if you go and press the pause button to stop emergency recording and you press yes, I have noticed that it actually will not save any video as being emergency recorded. It's almost like that is a cancel feature rather than a stop recording feature. So if you ever emergency record, let it stop on its own. All right, so a quick recap after a couple of months of usage, um, uh, some things I've noticed on this. I'm gonna start with the negative items first and then I'll mention some of the positive items. So the first negative item I notice is that once in a blue moon, it's not all the time, this thing will totally lock up. Now I haven't seen it happen when I'm actually using the dash cam. It doesn't happen while I'm driving. It usually will happen when it's starting up or stopping. I think it's really when it's starting up. And what happens is it locks up and even if you push and hold the power button, you can't turn it off or on or anything, it's just stuck on. Now this happened when I first got the cam and I turned it on and um, I'm not sure why it happens. I think it's actually positive that it never happens when I'm actually driving and using it. So that's really good because you don't want it to lock up at an important moment when you're expecting the dash cam to do its job for you. Um, so it's only something that I see on power on and power off. And when this first happened, I thought the whole thing was bricked. But what I noticed is below here, there's a tiny little hole that you can 
insert a paper clip into or a pin and it will reset the device and it will kind of reboot and stuff and you'll recover from the lockup. So that issue is not a deal breaker, it's just an occasional inconvenience that I would rather not see with something like this, but it doesn't affect the normal usage of the device once it's on and running and you're driving. The other thing I noticed which is kind of related to the lockup I was just mentioning is that occasionally when I turn the power on on my vehicle and start up the ignition and then start backing out, I'll notice the dash cam is off. It's not recording, but it had been on when I first turned on the car, but something made it go off. I'm actually suspicious that when you turn on the car to go to the starter position and then retract the key a little bit to be in the normal on position, that there's some fluctuations in power that affect the, the power of this and cause it to turn off. It's not a big deal. I'll usually just unplug the power and plug it back in, or I can do the power button, but usually I just unplug the power cable and plug it back in and it boots right on up and gets started and it's fine after that. There's another bug I saw one night when I was testing emergency recording and I pressed the emergency recording button and it began emergency recording. I noticed that the seconds value for the loop timer for the video was alternating between two seconds and three seconds and the emergency recording icon was just staying lit. So it was staying in emergency record mode and it wasn't turning off and it was just really weird because the seconds value was fluctuating between two seconds and three seconds. So I chalk that up to some sort of firmware bug or hardware bug or both or something. I don't really know. I've only seen that once. It was really weird, but it went away after I powered off and recycled the unit. Now, I haven't upgraded the firmware on this since I bought the unit. I just wanted to buy it as a regular user and unbox it and see how it worked out of the box. I don't know if there's a firmware update for this. So my guess is I'd probably be best to go look for a firmware update to see, you know, if that would fix some of the software issues. But those software issues haven't been things that have prevented me from using it normally. They just are little, they cause little quirks to come up here and there. Uh, that emergency recording thing is the only thing I've seen like while I'm actually driving that's, that's like a bug or some issue. And it only happened once. The other thing I noticed is with the rear cam, because that cam is mounted inside the rear window and it points outwards, what I notice is during the daytime it picks up the reflection of the dash in the rear of the car. So the dash that's below the rear window. I don't know what you call that back area of a car, but it's like the same thing as a dashboard, but it's in the rear of the car. And mine happens to be beige or tan or something. And the tan, it has some dark areas like where there's speakers and stuff. And, and the reflection of all those various colors get picked up by that rear camera. And you can see it in the example video. Um, you'll see like some discoloration on the bottom there. And that's just the reflection of the back uh, dash area. That brings me to another little point about these internal do-it-yourself dash cams. Now this thing is not a deal breaker that I'm going to mention, especially for the front dash cam, which is probably the most important for some people depending on what your usage is. But what I've noticed is because all these cameras are mounted inside and pointing out, they are uh, subject to picking up reflections or dirt on the windshield. And these lenses and the cameras are actually fairly sensitive at picking up spots and things like that. So it's not like those are out of focus and you can't see them. You can actually see spots on the windshield if you look in the sample uh, dash cam video in this video, you'll see what I'm talking about if you look closely at the windshield. So you just clean your windshield if you want to make sure it's a clear thing. It wasn't a deal breaker for the front camera. I have to say the rear camera view is less than satisfactory for me. First, because of the reflection. That's the number one issue I feel is that reflection. As well as at night, it's just, it doesn't pick up as well, like in the rain and stuff, you can't really see much with it. And that kind of brings me to another little issue with the rear camera. This small screen, if you're thinking that this is going to be a screen that you can look at while you're backing out the car to back out safely, I personally don't use this screen for that purpose. The reason why is I have just felt this screen is so small for that purpose. It's really not a good view. I have an old car that does not have a rear camera when you go in reverse, but I've had my car repaired before where they loaned me a car that has one of those uh, features that's actually built into the car by the manufacturer of the car. And those rear view cameras when you're backing out are really clear and the big display shows you what's going on as you back out. And you can really 
look at those things and see, you know, really kind of what's going on back there. With this small camera, it's not the same thing. So I personally don't use this for a safety rear view camera. I mean, I think the way I look at it is it's good that it's there. I can glance at it, but I ultimately want to use my rear view mirror and look behind and all that stuff. I don't want to ignore using the old methods of making sure things are okay. Now, I've got to mention another thing here. Hello, buddy. <laughs> I'm being visited by, by my little bud. You want to say hello? This is Ricochet. Hello. Say hello. He's a good guy, this guy. On, a, on the positive side of things, I have to say the video footage that comes off of this for the front dash cam is really lovely, I mean, for the this kind of product. I mean, this is not a super professional camera or anything, but the quality of the full HD video is really nice and clear, and you can see that in the demo videos that are part of this video. And I'm very happy with that. I think that's actually the main usage that a lot of people have for dash cams is really getting good, you know, perspective on the front and having the dash cam. And if that's your main usage and you don't care about those other features, then this seems to be pretty functional for that purpose. I also think the audio recording for a small device like this, the audio quality was pretty good, I felt. Hello, this is Ashley testing the audio recording on the Drive HD dash cam. I also really like the feature that they have where it embeds GPS onto the video footage while you're driving, and then you can play that back in their Drive HD uh, dash cam player. And when you play it back in the player, it'll actually show you the video footage next to a map or a satellite view of where you were driving, and that's pretty cool. I don't have a particular usage for that, but it, it was kind of cool, so I thought I'd mention that. I did notice that the GPS got a little erratic when I got into the downtown area and was surrounded by buildings and I've seen some good GPS uh, mapping software that doesn't do that. It's still kind of good enough if you want to see where you are on the map. It's just not as crisp as some other mapping software I've seen. So overall, it's a nifty little camera. I'm not sure if this is the best one for any particular audience out there. I think you really need to shop these around. My feeling is if you're in the market for one of these and you want to really get the right one that works for you, I would look at some of those reviews online that review all the latest dash cams and show you which one their pick is. So this is only one dash cam product and um, it may or may not be the right one for you, but this is my experience. This is the one that I have, and I just wanted to share that with you, and that's about it. All right, I hope you guys are doing well, and if you like this video, I hope you click like. If you want to subscribe, that would be pretty awesome, and other than that, um, have a great weekend or week or whatever you're doing. All right, take care. Thanks. Bye.